Let's address the Jeffrey Dahmer situation. What's going on everybody? My name is Omizi and listen man, the Jeffrey Dahmer situation is getting completely out of hand. Dahmer Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, was released on Netflix September 21st of 2022. Right now, as it stands, Dahmer had the highest Netflix debut of any series on record and is standing only two in total watch hours behind Stranger Things on the platform. Now, for those that are unfamiliar who Jeffrey Dahmer is, I mean, you're under a rock. But if we're being quite honest with you, he's a serial killer? I don't. Listen, he's a man amongst many things. I suggest that you look up who he is because I don't want to get into the descriptions because these details can be very graphic but just know it's about a serial killer period point blank very heinous serial killer who targeted gay black men during the 1980s and for some strange odd reason Netflix has decided to revamp his story and bring it new life by giving it a mini series now this isn't the only time this has happened we've seen this with Zac Efron in the Ted Bundy series as well and there are many other examples as to situations just like this happening in today's age of media now you'd probably ask me, well, Omar, why is this such a bad thing? I, you know, people need to know the tale, people need to know the story. It's because he's hot, okay? I'ma put it out there. He's sexy, he's funny, he's quirky, he's charismatic. He is hot. I mean, he's got personality, he's got everything. And, and did I mention that he's hot? He's freaking hot. I mean, Dahmer in the story and Ted Bundy, who's played by Zac Efron, are both very, very hot. I remember when the Ted Bundy story came out, I watched it vividly. And the two things that stood out was, man, they do not talk about the heinous crimes enough in this to make me feel like I understand what's really going on. I mean, they only hinted at it in the last five to 10 minutes of the movie as to exactly what he did, which was a heinous killing spree of a bunch of women. And the second thing that really stood out is, man, Zac Efron, at every chance he gets, has his shirt off. I mean, we get it, Troy. You're sexy. You got a towel on with your shirt off. You got another towel on with your shirt off. You got pants on, corduroys, shirt off, baby oil, same combo every single time. I mean, I thought he would have been auditioning for Creed or something like that, or maybe a superhero movie. And the same thing goes for the Dahmer story. I mean, just look at how Twitter's reacting. This guy is hot. And Twitter isn't the only one that's reacting like this. We're seeing multiple TikToks, we're seeing multiple YouTube videos, and different things of that nature that are alluding to these guys being sexy, these guys being misunderstood, these guys being hot. I've even seen tweets on the internet that said things like, oh man, if, if I was back then, Dahmer would have got me. What are people talking about? The main reason that I have a problem with the way that these stories are being told is for a plethora of reasons. But first and foremost, it romanticizes the character. I don't know if you guys have had the same feed that I've had, but I'm seeing multiple different accounts of people coming on the social media platforms and giving signs of sympathy or grace or romanticizing their looks or their personality about these serial killers. These guys committed heinous acts on people. I mean, real life people. I mean, seriously, these were real life people. This is not a made up story like something else. And I get it, the allure of these people were, hey, we charmed some people to come with us because we had these personality traits. But the way that they play up on these is getting a little scary. Uh, the Bundy movie, the entire movie is placated on, hey, I'm Ted Bundy and I'm a family man. I'm sexy, I got a girl, and I'm taking care of her. But the whole time he's committing murderers throughout the United States. And the same thing with the Dahmer movie. He comes off kind of, you know, soft-spoken and quirky and, oh, maybe if he just had love, which tweets have been saying, he wouldn't have been this way. But the whole time he is taking out his acts of violence on black gay men who are unsuspecting of the violence. And with that being said, also, these films are very, very distasteful to the people who actually lived these lives. I mean, they paint the victims in a way that makes them seem idiotic or not understanding or easily duped. I don't know. I've seen a lot of criticism towards the victims in these situations on many accounts about, yo, if these guys would have just, you know, gave Dahmer some compassion, maybe the situation wouldn't have been this way. He wouldn't have ate them? 
I mean, he's a serial killer for Pete's sake. I don't even know if I can say that without that being yellow marked. I'm not even gonna lie, but we're gonna go with it at this point. And back to the romanticism point. I hate the fact that people are making these people act as if they're cool or stylish or hip. I was working at Target the other day and somebody came in to the glasses department where I work and said, I, I wanted to know if you guys sold the Dahmer shades. I said to him, no, we don't sell serial killer shades. I don't know how you thought that that's what we did. Oh, well, I just wanted to know. Now, he could be talking about the style. Referring to them as that, specifically, when those glasses have a name. Listen, I have shades similar to that fashion. I've never in my life, because I bought these before the series came out, thought about calling these the Dahmer style. That's just sick. That's just sick. You know what you're doing. And the sad part about it, he was an openly gay man. He admitted that in the conversation that we had. Hey, a little weird context, let me explain real quick. He said to me, I, I know it's weird that a gay guy would be asking for, you know, something like this, but I, I just wanted to find out if y'all had him. Crazy, crazy. But others have reached backlash from trying to imitate and emulate these guys as well. Rick Ross asked about, hey, where can he find these Dahmer shades at as well? And Wooop, I believe is his name, uh, from DDG's crew, if you scroll through the internet and search up on YouTube, has been called out about trying to be Jeffrey Dahmer for 24 hours, taking on that challenge, whatever that means. Basically slapping on a wig, slapping on the glasses and going out there as if he is Jeffrey Dahmer. This stuff is disgusting. The skits, they're disgusting. The making fun of his dances and you know bringing it into a TikTok trend, all of it is disgusting because it's an attempt to make him look cool or make him look better in the light as opposed to what he truly was. And the last thing that I find to be disgusting, is two things. I find it to be disgusting that the victims of the family don't ask for this. Actually, they come out and they preach, hey, we do not want this to be happening. Rita Isbell, who is the sister of one of Dahmer's victims, comes out to say, when I saw some of the show, it bothered me, especially when I saw myself. When I saw my name come across the screen and this lady saying verbatim exactly what I said. She goes on to say, and just like a cousin of another victim, we did not ask or have any input as to how we were portrayed or how this story was told. And to be quite honest with you, we do not want to relive this trauma. But why does Netflix continue to do these things? I mean, even the victims of Ted Bundy's family come out and say the same things about those documentaries. We do not want to relive these dramas. It's because the true crime fetishizers are sick and they have dollars to spend. Recently, there was an auction in which some of Jeffrey Dahmer's merchandise and personal collectibles went on sale. Things like his prison owned Bible, his urn, and old photos went for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And probably the most sickening thing was his iconic glasses, which sold for an estimated $150,000 at auction. And there's even videos online of people unboxing these glasses and trying them on. The people who partake in these types of ventures and activities do not care about anything but their selves and their own sick fetishes. The victims of these families have continued to tell people over and over again that this actively harms them to this day and they do not listen to them. Instead, they continue to go on and romanticize time and time and time again about Dahmer and Bundy and Wayne Gacy and all these other historic murderers in the United States history. None of the proceeds go to any members of the family and none of the family has any input whatsoever about how they are to be depicted or their lost loved ones are to be depicted in the shows as well. The only reason that these things serve a purpose is for public consumption and for people to get their rocks off about some sick fantasy that they have, you know, dating Dahmer or something like that, which is just disgusting work. Truth be told, I knew something was wrong and I had to do some investigation when I found myself agreeing with Boosie when he said that us as black people should be boycotting the Jeffrey Dahmer showing. I think it's completely and utterly disgusting that Netflix continues to go against the wishes of those that are still living and put this type of imagery out there. There are plenty of other pieces of media out there that tastefully depict who these mass murderers were, these serial killers were. They are endorsed and have input from those that were directly affected. But when we have these things like Netflix putting this imagery out there, the only purpose that it serves is to lessen the impact of what happens with these serial killers. But hey, I could be wrong.